Hello, I'm Tara Finley, and this is part two of me assembling Eternal Bookstore, the DIY wooden book nook, sometimes referred to as a three-dimensional puzzle. Hi, I interrupt this broadcast to address an issue that someone brought up in the past video. The audio, my speaking voice, was at times occluded by the music. I want to make sure that everyone knows that they can change, they can turn on the closed captioning and it should be available for all of my videos. It's right there. The closed captioning is automatically generated by YouTube and so if I have literally just uploaded a film, it may not so you may have to wait a little while, like a couple of hours, but there it is. And so this is available on the app, on your phone. It's available on the app, on your TV. Sometimes on the TV, you have to go under the gear to get to the captioning. But now those captions are on and there they are. And they tend to be pretty accurate for, they're a little, <laughs> they're a little bit, um, discriminatory towards people with accents from other countries, but they tend to be pretty accurate with my voice. So please do try to turn on the closed captioning and see if that helps you. I need the closed captioning on for every single thing that I listen to, regardless of the volume of the music. It's just something that I struggle with. I struggle with hearing people in restaurants I struggle with understanding pretty much anyone on the television. And so I have to have that on for everything. Give it a whirl if you don't know about it and see if it works. And if it does, that's great. Let me know. If it doesn't, let me know that too. And uh, this is not sponsored. I'm just doing this myself. And as I'm doing it, I'm deciding to customize certain things. Customization number one, you could paint or wallpaper the entire upstairs of this book nook. Before customizing, look ahead in the manual to see what's coming up so that you know if something will get covered up. While I like this wallpaper here, I think I am going to put some on this top area. One thing to think about is that this book nook kit uses some printed out things on the walls to show you where to put things and then there may also be cutouts so you just want to be aware of the fact that you're going to have to deal with those as you apply your wallpaper or your paint. What I like about this is there's a really nice sort of gold looking piece that goes on there and let me get my wallpapers out. I got a bunch of wallpaper scraps for my local dollhouse store for 75 cents. Scraps are great because Book nooks often have small little walls and little areas that scraps fit really well on, but you could use scrapbooking paper, wrapping paper, or anything you have. So I like this paper. One of the things that appealed to me about this book nook, and here's what it looks like, is what appealed to me is the wood. As a child, I went to our local library and hung out all the time, and it was a really amazing place for me. I want to make this really a magical experience. That goes on like that. And all of this is going to inform how I want to customize this amazing, like, imagine in your house, if you have some wasted space and you could build your own little library like this, your own little two-story library. So what goes with this this could be painted this could be lighter wood this could be painted this could be you I could use my stain marker for this I could use something mystical or magical something that isn't wallpapery really at all Dollar Tree in the United States has these crafter square paper packs and look what I find in there this beautiful copper embossed, wow. Now that copper embossed paper really goes with the decor and looks fantastic. So I might use that. I think what I will do is, I think the staircase, I wish there was a picture of 
Oh, here. All right, here we go. So there's a floor up there, and there's like a... So this whole bottom part here gets covered up. To apply the wallpaper, I laid the wall face down on the back of the wallpaper and traced all the little cutouts so that I could make sure that everything that needs to get snapped into that wall later will still fit. Step seven involves several pieces of B. So we need B7. I'm gonna write on the back of them what they are in case I get interrupted or, so that's seven. But let's just look at mahogany real quick. Where are my Hunger Games fans? This is mahogany. So originally I was using walnut and I think I will continue to use walnut. Remember, if you can't get this out easily, gently, gently, gently with your knife, and it might be easier actually to do it from the back because then you'll be able to see where the tabs are. Just score the tabs ever so slightly. You don't even have to go all the way through. All right, B7 wants to go in the top right there. Boom. Seven, B6, it's gonna fit right in there. Ooh. How nice, it's so satisfying. All right, B5 goes in here. All right, so now this is the whole piece, and now step eight is to take these other pieces, which are before and before. And by the way, if you are gonna do miniatures, hold on to these pieces. I have here, a piece that I'm working on in another video that may not have been posted yet where I have this dollhouse I'm making, this miniature dollhouse, and look, I can use those pieces as molding on my miniature dollhouse, so hold on to those, okay? They don't go in inside of there, they sit right on there like, like this. This is fun. Book Nook kits are a really great introduction to miniatures, I'm finding. You don't have to do any measuring. You don't have to solve any problems, really. It's all laid out for you, and so it can be a really great way to learn how to use the different tools and skills that you might use later on to make your own miniatures. The line is right here to here to there. So that's exactly there. That's exactly where they go. I still haven't glued the nook walls and floor together. I wish I had waited until I decided to cut out the window. If you're gonna cut out a window, don't glue anything together yet. Cut the window first. That's all together now, beautiful. What's problematic is this hinge. I wish I hadn't put it on there. Put that door over there with another with my other stuff. So now here we are. And now I'm ready to glue in the stairs. And the stairs are going right here. So I'm gonna brush that off. I'm gonna put them in there. Make sure that everything looks how I think it needs to look. And it does. So now all I need to do is add a little bit of glue on the bottom of the stairs. 
Try to drop the stairs in directly where they go so that you aren't pushing glue all over the floor and make sure you're not covering up any of the tabs. And there are little stairs. Okay. <laughs> Having so much fun. Oh, I thought this would be fun. And then I thought you're going to hate it because you hate precision and you hate measuring. But I don't have to measure anything because it's all laser cut. It's all been measured for me. Oh, the battery box goes next to the attics or next to the stairs. So we're going to be installing that next. Oh, you access the battery pack, the switch through the door. That's what the door's for. All right. I'm going to take some Tombow mono adhesive. And I'm just going to stick it to the back here. That's that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So next, I didn't, I always forget to sand them before I color them. And then I'm going to do the underneath because again, I don't like seeing bright blonde wood sticking out on the bottom of the shelves. And now it wants me to stick on A27, which is this, and A22. Here's A22. Now here's what I have to say about these two. In the picture, they look gold. There's a shine to them, metallic shine to them. And my question is, do you think I should color those with gold? paint pen. First of all, I'm not feeling this. I'm going to set that aside for right now. I think this needs a little bit more done to it. What if I put a chair rail on there? Here's some skinny sticks. Skinny sticks are from Walmart and they're really good for craft. I'm thinking that I'm going to cut off these edge pieces here so that I have a place to put my chair rail. That way I can just bump it right up against the archway. When you're cutting things away from pieces in your kit, you want to be careful that you don't accidentally split the wood. And always, always, always be very safe and don't cut yourself. I'm going to cut that off. I might have to score it, score it, score it over and over and over. Okay. Sand this off. Sand this off. Let's glue this down. Remember whenever you're gluing something down that lines right up with the bottom that you line it up with the wall, not the tab. See on the right there, the tab is sticking out. And if I line my piece up with that, then it's going to not go together. All right, now that that's stuck down, I'm going to make the chair rail and I'm just gonna measure my skinny stick and cut it off. You can cut it using your X-Acto knife. I often use my jewelry flush cutters, my old ones, because it's just so easy to cut right through these. Sand the edges off and then I will paint them and glue them down. I did check the instructions to make sure that nothing was going to snap up against this that the molding would be getting in the way of. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of this scrap extra that I have here. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this off and I'm gonna use this as another dimension of molding on my chair rail. This piece and this piece. So let's glue on what goes there, okay? We know this goes there. We'll glue right along the edge here and then Get it right, 
against there lined up because the if there's no lines showing it's going to look better I need to color my two pieces here and these two pieces gold and I can tell you that right now I can see the area that I cut off glowing there so on both sides I'm just going to gently try to touch the edges that are not um, going to be visible that are going to be visible and then this is going to go in this direction right here right Beautiful. And then I have one more idea. I just want that lining up against the bottom of that board right there. And it's cockeyed and the glue's coming out. I want to put something at the top of this, a circle, a, a ball, a ornate something or another, like a, like a gold ball bead from my collection and that's the one I'm going to use and then if I decide to add more later I can do so. The battery box here's the switch and so you want that to be facing out and that's going to nestle down in between the stairs and where all those letters converge and you want to make sure that your wires are such that they're not twisted so that goes there and now we want to thread the two shortest so I decided to change this this panel here like you saw before and then I just changed this upper part here I placed some dollhouse wallpaper on there and I also cut out the existing window that was there. It wasn't really easy for me to cut that out with my cutoff wheel on my Dremel, but I did it. I didn't like this scene that came with the kit. So now all I'm gonna do is glue some trash plastic packaging to this window frame and that will be the glass. In the future, I, I just, and my advice moving forward is make sure that you like the colors before you proceed. So I may do something on this wall here, which isn't ready to be installed yet. This, um, there's a lot of furniture on this wall. Maybe I will extend the blue wallpaper across there, which will help brighten up the upstairs. There are a huge number of rectangles here on F, and these are all uh, essentially book blocks. So we're going to snap all these out, and we're going to work on the books. Okay, it's the next day, and I have cut out one of these strips and folded it in the accordion fashion and you can see it's a little bit wonky so some of these books are going to be like this and other ones are just going to be covers that go on the wooden blocks and then if I have to square this up a little bit I can try to do it probably that's not the best way and then you're just gluing the front and the back cover to the inside of the internal pages. A glue stick would actually work really well for this. But using the uh, mono adhesive, it's just a double stick tape. And there we go, we have a little book. To further customize this book nook, I created some paintings, book covers, maps, and a butterfly collection and a journal to add to my decor. Let's put the books aside for now and do our 
our paintings. So that's what I'm really hoping is gonna work well. I'm just gonna flip this over like so, so that we can all see what we're doing here. It's all right. I mean, it's better than the painting that I can't actually see. I cut out the rest of my paintings and then I got out my soft pastels and I added a little bit of aging so that the paper, the white part of the paper wasn't quite so glowy. I arranged the paintings back inside of the room box and then I noticed that I wanted to change them around. So I took some of them off and I'll just cover up those areas of uh, distress to the wall with either paint or other paintings. I used paintings that were in the public domain and you want to just make sure that you're not downloading anybody's artwork that isn't doesn't have a Creative Commons license. All right, now I've got paintings that you can actually see, which just look so much better than the originals. You can see what they are, and I really like the way the blue of Jane Austen's dress contrasts with the color of the wall there. And so now we're going to go back to the instructions. We built the stairs. We did this whole thing. And now we're on step 12. No. Step 13, which is to run the wires. So let's look at this. Let me flip this over for just a second. We have to put something into these little dots to run the wires along. In the footage that was lost, I ran the wires behind the staircase wall and secured them there with scotch tape. So we need board D, five, eight, 10, nine. Oh, oh, they're almost like um, two piece. They're two part. So, and then they're inside of D8. So D8 is gonna be used for something else. So you gotta just get, this is a two piece, see? Look, it comes apart. I think it comes apart. I'm not gonna, it's not coming apart easily. So you'll find sometimes things are easy to be pressed out from the front to the back and that destroys them less. The surface, the, co the outside edge, the outside color. All right, so D9 looks to be the half, so, cut in half like that okay let's lay this down like this these two wires together are going to be held in place here and then they're just like little clamps you just stick in there and hold things together one of the lights just sits there. Once it gets to wherever it, the distance it can go, then you stop. All right, so there's three D9s, and then this one gets fed up through this little notch here, and it also wants me to tape these two down right there. Okay, so now, that's that way. And then this is ready for something else. Okay, so now we've got some little pieces of furniture to put together, so let's set this aside. So this piece of furniture is a little chest and it's on board C. And you have to be careful because they're inside something else. And again, if they're not gonna pop right out, get your knife. doesn't even have to be cut all the way through because the width of your blade might be wider than, thicker than the slot here. Boy, this is really a tough one for some reason. This came out, so I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna try to get that through there, which I did, and then I don't know if I need this again. I'm just gonna snap it back in for now. 
just want to file down those tabs. Those tabs were strong. Let's see, 16. And C17, which I think are these drawers. And the drawers are not incised all the way through, so they're just kind of engraved, okay? And then C18, two C18s, very ornate, are the um, legs. These are really pretty. This is the divider, and I don't need it, so I can, if it's in the way, I can just get rid of it, and then I can. Sometimes. So now we should be able to build this little chest. And the legs definitely have a front and a back because they aren't colored on both sides, but I am going to color the back of these with the cherry, I think the cherry marker. Let's see. Yeah, the cherry marker.